Today, something you definitely need to know, we find ourselves in a very unusual situation with the stock market. So we know the Fed all of a sudden said they're gonna start cutting rates in 2024. Very unexpected pivot. They were saying higher for longer, higher for longer, all year during 2023, all year during 2022. But it seems that they think that they have conquered inflation. Now, if you've seen my old videos, you know that they changed the way they measured inflation. So it's questionable as to how much they actually did this. But today, what we're gonna focus on is the fact that the S&P can either go as high as 6,000 or as low as 3,000 in the foreseeable future. Now, let me give you the reason for why it could go all the way down to 3,000. Check out this chart right here. It shows that it is not during the time of raising interest rates that the stock market usually goes down. It's an average of 11 months after the Fed starts raising interest rates. So historically speaking, the last five recessions have taken place roughly 11 months after the Fed started hiking rates. The reason for this is because corporate debt, they are not current with their interest rates. So today's corporate debt, they're paying old interest rates. So for example, a company that's paying debt right now now, they took on that debt in 2020, 2021, when interest rates were zero to 3%, which means there's a lag effect on how high the interest rates are paying, which is why their margins have not been squeezed. They have not had to lay people off. But when rates go up a year or two after that, that's when they start paying these high rates. So check out this chart right here. This shows that there is a delay in how much they have to pay in their interest payments versus when interest rates are actually going up based on the federal funds rate. Now that traditional scenario, you know, if we are in normal conditions, we would expect, okay, the Fed's lowering rates now, companies have taken out more debt that they're gonna have to pay at a higher interest rate while rates are high. But look at all the money that we have added over the last three years. So the Fed's balance sheet, we went from $4 trillion to $9 trillion of the Fed's balance sheet. That's the act of the Federal Reserve buying bonds, adding liquidity to the market, suppressing interest rates, fueling the economy. And then M2 money supply went from 15 trillion to 20 trillion. Totally unprecedented. You could see how jarring this is compared to historical precedent. So that's the big thing that we really don't know how much this is gonna affect the economy and how long it's going to affect the economy. I mean, in a normal situation, we would say, okay, you know, conditions are tightening. So obviously the market's gonna go down, it's gonna recede. But with the fact that we've added this much money to the economy, pulled this much growth forward, we don't know if it's gonna have the same effect that we've seen historically. Now, with the Fed lowering rates, the market's so detached from reality, you see how it's reacted over the last few weeks. Every index hit an all-time high, or almost an all-time high towards the end of December. So here's an example of how detached the market is from traditional fundamentals and how obsessed it is with what the Federal Reserve is gonna do. I saw an article that had said, hot jobs report scares the market. So the fact that the job growth was positive made the market think that, oh, wow, maybe the Fed won't cut rates as fast because the job market's still good, meaning that the market cares more about easy monetary policy than the actual financial conditions of the market. So if the Fed keeps being dovish saying they're gonna cut rates, what, three or four times this year, then you know, the market could go all the way to 6,000. But at the same time, if these historical factors actually hold up, corporate margins get squeezed, they have to lay people off, that's when you can see the market go down to 3,000. Or if we have an actual liquidity crisis, which we haven't had in a long time because the Fed has backstopped everything. Since 2008, the Fed has made it very clear that they're gonna jump right into a situation, come to the rescue. So like we saw the bank term funding program get launched last year where banks start going under because their collateral got insufficient. The Fed started this program. Oh, hey guys, don't worry. We'll give you face value your collateral, don't worry, you won't go bankrupt. That makes me think, okay, what if we did have a liquidity crisis? Is it, is it even possible to have a liquidity crisis anymore with the Fed being too scared to let the market actually fix itself and let the unhealthy companies die? I don't know if they're gonna let that happen anymore, but that's what I see as the scenario in which the market goes down to 3,000 is if it, a liquidity crisis happens and they let it happen, or if corporate margins get squeezed people get laid off and you know a traditional recession happens. That's the 3000 scenario. The 6000 scenario is if the market is actually this detached from reality and people just chase the market up because of interest rates going down. So that is what you need to know about what's going on with the stock market today. I would not take a 100% position on anything. I think if I had to bet my life on it, I would say 6000 because it seems like the Fed just has that degree of an impact over the market right now. You know, it's totally detached from reality. I think it's just going to get chased up, especially this year. I think for the near term, it goes ripping higher. Maybe if Trump gets elected, the Fed gets aggressive with rates again like they did when he was in the first time and that's when it recedes. And not to worry because in 2036, I'm gonna be your president and we'll have unprecedented economic growth with healthy interest rates without the Federal Reserve having to come and save the day. That is what you have to look forward to in the future. God bless.